All right, so we've got some exciting news today. <laughs> who, who knows what the exciting news is? Who's got a guess? Anyone? Yes. Well, it's not 1.0 yet, but we are, uh, <laughs> we, are, we are starting the process. Meteor 1.0 Andromeda. So the uh, question that everyone in this room is probably wondering is, when is it going to be ready? The answer is, we're thinking early next year. So we've got uh, a lot more work to do, and there's still some uncertainty, but I'm, I'm pretty, comfortable, pretty comfortable in saying that it's, it's going to be early next year. So what does 1.0 mean? What is 1.0? All right. So 1.0 means we're going to lock down and stabilize a lot of the core APIs. We're going to commit to supporting some things for a while. So Meteor 1.0 is a stable flat platform for writing apps, meaning you can write your app against Meteor 1.0 and not worry, oh no, all these APIs are going to change in a, in a point release. Um, it's a stable platform for writing packages, meaning that you can write your packages on top of stable APIs, and it means that we have the versioning and the package system sorted out enough that um, when you're writing an app, you're not worried about, oh no, these packages are going to change in a way that breaks my app. And it's also a stable platform for writing tutorials, books, content. It means that if you write a tutorial about Meteor, you know that something is going to come along tomorrow that breaks the tutorial so that your, your students, your users, aren't going to be able to follow your tutorial anymore. So uh, and the other thing is it's supported for production use. Now, many people have been running Meteor in production for a while already. So, but this is the point where we put our, our stamp of approval on it. We say, you know what, you don't have to be an explorer going out into adventurous new territory to get Meteor into production. We're, we're ready, we're comfortable with you, you pushing it out there and us feeling responsible for you having a good experience, even if you are not ready to rack some bushes. So there's the core theme. The theme for 1.0, for Andromeda, is locking down the core. So our focus in 1.0 is on a small, stable, modular core that we can build on in the future. So what does that mean? Let's talk about modular. So what we're shipping, what we're shipping in 1.0, what 1.0 is made of, what Meteor has always been made of, is a set of packages. And so each of these packages is there, you know, each of them has a, a specific function. It's a good piece of, for the most part, systems level infrastructure functionality. So for example, the DDP client is pretty mature at this point. Um, the, the reactivity system, each of these is a reusable module. And we have a, a standard stack of these packages that's called standard app packages. That's what you get in a Meteor template. So you can use standard app packages if you want. If you don't want to use standard app packages, you can put the pieces together some kind of other way. We're not yet supporting using the pieces outside of Meteor, but it's not that hard. There are people that are using Minimongo outside of Meteor with Backbone. There are people that are experimenting with using depths outside of Meteor. There's nothing too Meteor specific about these packages. They just happen to work pretty well together. They're just good, high quality JavaScript systems engineering. And the other thing in Meteor, of course, is the command line tool, Meteor, which is just a build system. It's, a, it's an asset pipeline. It's a tool for taking these packages, compiling the copy script in them, uh, processing the assets, minifying the JavaScript, and resolving all the dependencies, resolving the versions, and um, making a, the finished bundle that you can ship into production. So that's, that's the two things that are in 1.0, a set of high quality packages and the Meteor build tool. And by small, what I mean is, you know, like we originally thought we were going to have to build a router for, for Meteor 1.0. But there's some great routers out there right now. Like our router is awesome. Um, Meteor 1.0 shouldn't and won't include a lot of this high level functionality that people have already built that's great. Uh, that's in atmosphere right now. Instead for 1.0, we're focusing on the core. We're focusing on the stuff that has already been shipped, the system that all these packages are based on top of. And we're going to get that totally locked down. The data sync, the reactive templating, um, like the server environment, that's the stuff that's the focus for 1.0. Now in the future, yeah, we might have a more comprehensive platform as some of this stuff gets so popular, so ubiquitous, that it needs to get folded in. It makes sense to fold it into core. That could happen. But for 1.0, the focus is on a, a small, you know, stable core. So now let's get down into the details. Let's talk about some of the specific things that are in and out for 1.0. So there's a couple of big ticket items, the things that are going to be a, a lot of work for us uh, in, the, in the coming months. So the first thing, something a lot of people have been excited about and have been waiting for is an official package system. So 
we've gotten an amazing distance on top of Meteorite, on top of the current Atmosphere server, and on top of the package.js format I hacked together in two hours late at night a long time ago, and that I never thought anyone on the internet would ever see. <laughs> kind of mortified about. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to get rid of the package, the hack that is package.js. Um, we're going to have a, a finalized way for defining a package that's going to be the stable, official, finished way. And along the way, we're also going to resolve some of the uh, things that are weird mismatches between apps and packages, like the fact that you can't define a load order in an app. So a lot of that stuff is going to get straightened out and resolved. We're going to fold Meteorite into Meteor, meaning you're not going to have to install a separate tool uh, to use packages from Atmosphere. You can say Meteor add and a package in Atmosphere, and that'll work fine. Uh, we're going to make Atmosphere into an official supported service, since it is kind of the basis of our ecosystem that we're building together. And the other thing, um, and probably the thing that's like a ton of work of, of these four things, is tightening up some of the package versioning. Because probably a lot of people have had an experience where you type Meteor update, and then suddenly your app breaks because you're using these packages in Atmosphere, and the versioning isn't quite straightened out between the packages in Atmosphere and the Meteor releases. So we're going to tighten up a lot of that and um, give you a much more consistent and clearer experience when you're using Atmosphere packages in your app. OK, so that's, that's already <laughs> a lot of work. Big deal number two, um, Meteor UI. So if you've been coming to DevShop for the last couple months, you've heard a lot about Meteor UI. So Meteor UI is a, it's a, it's a third generation real-time templating engine. You know, so we're on iteration three of this. And so the question here is, you know, the whole, one of the big things people love about Meteor is I just, I just write this template and it's not like Angular, you have to put all these tags in in a special language. It's just magically reactive in real time. And um, that's a hard problem. And uh, based on the experience we've had having this be in production and seeing how people are using it and seeing all the things that people want to do, we have a third generation uh, engine for this. It replaces Spark. And it's, it is much better if you haven't had a chance to use it. Um, because if you try to do weird things um, or things that Meteor UI thinks is weird, it works much more easily and naturally. Uh, so we're eliminating preserve and isolate and constant and landmarks and all those tricky details that uh, people um, had trouble working with. We found a way to make all of that unnecessary. Um, it re-renders far less frequently. So you don't have to think, oh no, when is this template going to re-render? I, I have to think about that. Um, it solves a huge array of issues. Um, literally, if you look at in GitHub on the tracker, by far the most common issue is someone having a problem with um, some corner case in, in Spark that they weren't able to figure out. So this is going to suck a huge amount of friction out of the Meteor user experience. And it also means that a lot of times when you're integrating with um, non-Meteor code, when you're just saying, I should be able to use this jQuery widget, and it should just work, it now will just work. So um, what's definitely going to be in 1.0, we're definitely going to land this new engine that solves all those problems. Um, we may keep the existing API, though. We also have a new API, which is really the Meteor UI API that goes with this new engine that makes it much more easy to define these reusable widgets. It's object-oriented. Um, it lets you encapsulate reactive state in this widget. It lets you configure the widgets. And um, it, it is uh, a much better tool, especially if you want to take your widgets and package them. Like if you want to make a type ahead search box or you want to make a date picker, you want to put that in atmosphere for other people to use, it uh, makes that much easier. So if we can get this into 1.0, we will, but we're not going to block 1.0 on it. It might be something that you is optionally available in 1.1 or 1.2 that you can turn on if you want it. Um, Big ticket item number three, uh, we, have, we have been doing some amazing scaling work over the last month or two. So the, the big news is we have, a, we have a new Mongo connector. We have a new real-time Mongo connector. And what it does is it acts as a replication slave to Mongo. So it, it connects to your Mongo cluster and says, hey, I'm a MongoDB too. Why don't you just tell me everything that's changing in the database? And then it uses that to drive all the updates, pushing those updates down to all those tabs that are open. So that's far more efficient. And in our benchmarks, we're already seeing an order of magnitude improvement just with the proof of concept to this. So I think that, um, and I think there's a, a lot more headroom on there. So this is really going to let you get into production with a different scale of app once this lands. And the other thing is, um, we've also been, you know, many, many people have been running multiple backend processes already with Meteor. But we're going to document that, tighten it up, work out what the best patterns for that are. And there's a little bit of framework level support we're probably going to add for it too. So what this does is, so for example, um, 
we have a we have a benchmark internally where we run 20 meteor processes. We've got a DDP load balancer that balances over them, and then we have this um, real-time Mongo connector that acts as a replication slave to Mongo, and it all works great. So all this will be in in um, Meteor 1.0 as well, locked down, ready to go in production. And uh, big deal number four that brings us to you know a big question people often have is what's the best way to operate a Meteor application? Like how should I set this up in EC2? How should I make this run? There sure is a lot of work. I don't want to do it myself. Um, so Galaxy is our solution for a, a turnkey Meteor deployment experience. So it takes the Meteor deploy command everyone's probably used, and it lets you Meteor deploy to your own servers. So you can install the Galaxy AMIs on Amazon, and you can type Meteor deploy, and your app will go right to your server. It just works. Uh, it scales. And um, all, all the things we're talking about will be incorporated, as well as like the best practices for operating your app. So it's, uh, it's our first commercial product. And it will be, it basically does for DevOps what Meteor does for development. It's kind of the vision for Meteor, the other half of the puzzle. So that, there'll be at least an alpha of that available for the 1.0 release. So you can get into production using Galaxy if that's what you want to do. Um, right, so those are the, the big ticket things. Uh, Going to be a, a busy rest of 2013 for us. Um, this this uh, official revamped package system, um, the new Meteor UI engine, this increased scaling work with acting as a Mongo replication slave and running multiple processes, and also the at least an alpha release of Galaxy for everyone to start getting their apps on, onto. So OK, we can also talk about some of the, the smaller decision points we're going to make. So databases. We're going to focus. We're going to focus in on making a great Mongo experience for 1.0. So the hooks for other databases are already in core. Uh, but we're not going to freeze those. We're not going to stabilize those because we think we need to do at least one more database binding before we really think we're ready to lock down that API. And we could wait. We could wait until we've done that to ship 1.0, but that doesn't make any sense. Like people are ready to use 1.0 with Mongo. So we're going to let 1.0 be Mongo and have it be earlier than it would be if we also supported SQL and Redis and Rethink and all these other databases people have been asking for. But that's definitely going to be um, a major, major project as once 1.0 is out the door to start locking down that API. And part of the reason for this is there's a lot of work to give a great experience with a database. An experience is as good as the experience we give with Mongo. Because for example, when you type, when you install Meteor on your laptop, you don't have to install Mongo. We handle that for you. We handle the, Mon the Mongo versioning for you. So how are we going to do that with other databases? That's enough work that it makes sense to put it after 1.0, uh, in my opinion. Um, uh, DDP, um, we're going to have, we're going to stabilize DDP. We're going to publish the official version 1 spec and stick with it. So this means that you can count on the DDP protocol. Sorry, you can count on DDP. The last P is protocol. <laughs> um, staying the same. So you can write a DDP client in Objective-C, and you can ship that in a native mobile application, and you can push that out to your 100,000 users, and you can know it's going to stay the same. Now, there'll be a DDP2 one day, but uh, DDP1 will be supported through 1.0 and probably beyond as well. This also means that if you are exposing an API to your site that's based on DDP, if you have one Meteor site that wants to connect to another Meteor site and they're different versions, since they sp both speak DDP1, no problem. That'll work. That's supported. Um, HTTP and REST. Often people say, how do I make REST endpoints? Or how do I serve RSS out of my app? Or how do I implement a webhook? Um, many of these questions. So, and again, this is something that lots of people have been doing, but we're going to officially support it. We're going to officially support using Connect Middleware to extend the HTTP server and Meteor however you want. So I think that's the cleanest and the easiest way to support those use cases, because we'll have a different API for that if, if we have one that works that people like. Um, and, the, and the other thing that's definitely going in in the server environment, um, we're going to smooth over some of the rough stuff right now that exists around when do I need to use wrap async? When do I need to use fibers? When do I need to use bind environment? These are all things that you run into if you're binding async node APIs that didn't come from Meteor. And we haven't documented that yet. So we're going to simplify that, document it, and make it very easy to say, you know, if I have to use something that isn't from Meteor, that isn't compatible with the Meteor API, here's a very simple way to wrap it and, and make it work. And that'll also be uh, supported and documented. OK, so how about the maybes? Um, Windows, maybe. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a pretty good Windows port out there right now. 
And the main thing is, yeah, we're going to do an official Windows port, but we're not going to block 1.0 on it. We're not going to wait for it if it's not ready. So maybe it'll be 1.0, maybe it'll be 1.1. Um, we're, we're not going to block 1.0 for it. We don't, we, don't think it's, we don't think there's a reason why it can't come as, as the next step after 1.0. Um, an official testing API. I would love to, I mean, we use, we use TinyTest internally. It's worked great. I know a lot of you guys use it. Um, I saw an amazing thing the other night where um, someone using Meteor to control a bunch of servos for their robot, and they, they started up TinyTest and they ran it and all the servos on their desk started whirring and spinning. Uh, so <laughs> it's definitely getting some real world use. Um, so something we'll do at some point is clean it up and uh, document it and maybe it's not the, you know, you could use it directly or you could use a testing package built on top of it. Um, will that be in 1.0? Again, since, the, since it doesn't have tight dependencies on the rest of 1.0, we're going to say maybe. Um, if it's done, yes. If we have, if we have time before our, our target, yes. If not, maybe it's 1.1. Um, the other thing uh, I think on, on my top 10 list of things uh, that people want in Meteor is a, um, a higher level publish API, something that makes it easier to do joins between um, multiple collections. And that is, I, I would love to put something in there that helps with that. It's also something that can be addressed in a package. And it's something that could be addressed in a 1.1 because it's not, we're not going to break the existing API. So if we, can, if we have time to get it in, awesome. Um, if not, it, it might be 1.1 or 1.2. Um, so that's, that's, that's the current thinking, all right? So that's, this is a starting point for discussions. I, this is to start the conversation about what you want to see in 1.0. The reason we do DevShop every month is you know, to, to listen to people, to like figure out what you want, to learn about your applications, to learn about what you're trying to get into production, to learn how your packages are going. And so let's, let's you know, I, I want to know what people think uh, should be in 1.0. So if you think that there's something that we absolutely need to have in there, that we need to get into that lockdown core of APIs, um, let me know. If you think there's something that, you know, that would be nice, but I don't have to have it. Maybe this is too early. Let me know that too. So we're going to be finalizing this, you know, probably over the next, probably try to have a pretty good idea over the next couple weeks so that we can um, plan our time and get through this uh, aggressive and ambitious development agenda we've set for ourselves with those big ticket items. So now's the time to let us know what you think. So I'd love to have any questions about uh, where we're going with this. Not for 1.0. So the reason for that is because enough work The question is was, is Jade oh, still on the yeah. roadmap? Is Jade still on the roadmap? Other templating engines. <laughs> um, thank you, Jade. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the reason for this is because the, the new Meteor UI uh, needs a, a somewhat deep, a different kind of integration with the templating engine. So, you know, we, since we're not sure if the higher level Meteor UI APIs are going to be mature, we're not yet ready to say, oh, this is how you do Jade. But uh, I think you'll find that the, um, I mean, David, what do you think? I think the render buffer stuff in Meteor UI, like it's, Something you could probably build on top of if you wanted to. Yeah, it would be a good story for multiple templating engines because of the UI stuff and uh, some previous templates we used. Yeah. 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 Dave, David Greenspan says, yes, that we're going to support multiple template engines and have an API for that, but um, 1.0 is a little early just because of how deep the hooks that Meteor UI needs into that are. Other questions? Um, have you given any thought to changing the conventions in the framework? So I'm a user with Meteor user, and when I type in first thing in the data, I have no effect to instruct for that. And when you look at tutorials and you look at the Meteor user uh, book, there is a pattern of how you wrote a template. You're defined correctly, and your server doesn't do the same to write files there. Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, providing more guidance in the framework about the best way to lay out your Meteor app, the best way to structure your directory tree, the best way to structure your namespaces and your templates, um, and the observation that, well, there are, you can learn a lot about good ways of doing this from Discover Meteor um, or other books that people have been written and tutorials that exist. Um, are we going to put that into the core of the framework? 
And, and I, did I get that right? Yeah. And I think for 1.0, um, not really. It's because we are seeing a lot of experimentation with different ways of doing this. And um, I think we just need to see a little bit more how it goes. Also, since things like um, routing and forms, we are, um, we're going to go with the stuff that already exists around that rather than trying to bring that into core. I think as that stuff starts to enter core is also when some of this, you know, these core patterns are going to get um, a little bit um, more standardized. So I think that's definitely something that uh, over the course of the next year is going to be a, a major topic. But it's just a, a little early still to say this is the one right way. Hopefully there'll be a couple right ways or maybe one right way that emerge just as people write apps and, and write about the best way to write apps. And um, we, can, we can start to lock that down. In the back. So I, I'm sorry, I heard about half of that. Um, the things that we are not sure about that we don't have a, a strong vision around. Um, I, yeah, or resources. Uh, I think the, the things that are the, um, would be the biggest help right now is there's so much exciting stuff going on right now in Atmosphere um, around the, the packages that are somewhat slightly higher level ways of looking at the stuff that Meteor gives you. So I think like the stuff that's going on with forms and routing and schemas and models, I think that's, that's like very interesting right now. And I think that's really what's pushing the evolution of the, of the platform forward. The other thing I'd say is um, I think the, the other big thing, like the other, you know, there is a, there's a dam that's about to burst. There's a lot of water, you know, kind of uh, welled up behind, behind uh, this dam, which is SQL support. Lots of people want SQL support. Um, or like relational database support is a big um, blocker for some people to look at Meteor because, for example, they've got uh, a database that's a SQL database that has all their data. So I think um, starting to figure out what would that look like because we've got such a great thing going with documents and it's, it's like so easy how this works. Is that going to be an ORM? You know, how, how does that work in Meteor land? So I'd, I'd love to see some thinking and experimenting around that. I'd love to see some thinking and experimenting around the best way to build a real-time connector to a SQL database, the way we built this real-time connector to Mongo databases. Maybe it's based on triggers. Maybe it's based on replication. A couple different ways you could do it. Um, I think that's really the, the next frontier. The other thing is, um, as we get into when that, when that second um, batch of Meteor UI work lands, the components, it's going to become possible to make reusable reactive components, meaning it's going to be really easy to make um, make these uh, like type ahead search boxes, all, all kinds of things, and drop them into your app. And so understanding how that works and how we can get the most productivity for people out of that is going to be a big deal. And I think those, you know, you can, there have been experiments for some of those APIs that you can see in the recorded dev shop talks from the previous dev shops. And it's something that's evolving rapidly. And you know, I think we're, I think we're, you know, in, in the not too distant future, we're going to see that stuff be a little bit more available. Is that, is that fair, David? I don't quite understand. So the question is, um, security features around encryption of the database? Yeah, so um, from what I understand, like MongoDB um, has some way of working around the uh, issue of not being able to insert actual data records. Um, so I'm curious to know, but there's, there's ways to do this. Is, is this security if your machine is compromised and someone Um, I don't think we have any plans to provide framework level record encryption for databases. I think that's probably something that you could handle either by running your database, like on an encrypted file system, for example, could be a solution. Um, um, 
I'd, I'd love to talk more after and understand your use case better so I can know, know more how we, could, how we could help you in the framework. Animations. Animations. Uh, <laughs> so, um, well, that, that's, just, that's like just one level of granularity deeper than I want to go in the presentation. But I think, um, so that's coming in Meter UI. And certainly, um, like David shot at me, Avi shot at me if I've, if I've got this wrong. I think certainly um, when we land the new object-oriented widget API, we'll definitely have animation support there. I think we're also thinking we might in 1.0 also provide animated list or a few like basic things that maybe get you 80% of the way there and got some hooks uh, so that you can start playing with that. Because the whole engine's there. It's just a question of really polishing this API so we make sure it's what we want. Uh, looks like we've got time for one more, maybe. There's a question from Twitter as oh. well. Uh, but yes, you're, you first. The order they might land. Uh, so, um, rough thoughts. I mean, since this is still, since this is still like in the discussion phase, so we want to know what everyone thinks. Like, it's going to be partly determined by um, what people tell us, what what they think. But um, I would say, from a scheduling point of view, I think what's probably going to happen is, so, Meteor UI. I think um, the you're going to see the Engine, you're going to see at least a preview release of the engine really soon now, and then I think depending on how that um, goes, we'll give we'll have a better sense of when the wh whether the object-oriented API is going to make 1.0. So this is happening, you know, in parallel with everything else, and you'll you'll see something in the not too distant future. Um, packages. This is probably something that we're going to be starting ASAP, and also will run in parallel with everything else, and. Uh, haven't mapped it out yet, so I'm not sure in what order these things are going to land. There's a there's a lot of work here, so I don't know. Um, there there might be some stuff before the end of the year. I don't know. We'll see. Um, there's there's it's it's something to get right. Um, and scaling um, this this is also something that we have running as a proof of concept, so it will also run in parallel with the other two things. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's <laughs> it's amazing how many balls we have in the air. Um, the uh, and and how well things are how well things seem to be going given how much is in the air. Um, this is this is like this is in the state where there's a lot of details to go from what we have running to, to what's in um, in uh, something that we can ship. So it's um, probably it's something that we're we're going to be. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say a date without without uh, <laughs> with, w without having David Glassy here to <laughs> to say the date instead of me. But um, it's it's been going it's been going pretty well, and uh, it it works. So it's it's a question of um, getting out there. And so I, th I think that the main thing is we're going to be running um, we're going to be running these threads simultaneously. They're in different levels of completion. We may balance CPUs between them a, a little bit, uh, and then these. Smaller items, a lot of this, honestly, is just documenting. Like, it's documenting things that already exist. Sometimes renaming some identifiers. Like, this, a lot of the other stuff that's going in here is mop up, taking the best practices that have already emerged in the community and, like, making, documenting those things and making them official. So, it's probably work that we will uh, do in between some of the other items. I would say, if there are things that you would like to see land earlier rather than later, don't be shy. Speak up. Because, especially for the things that weren't on my like big four, you know, like big civil engineering project kind of scale of stuff. We have some flexibility for how we're going to order that to um, serve everyone's needs. Is there a Twitter uh, question? Yes, uh, a, a few, but I'll just Hi, choose one. <laughs> uh, any thoughts so far as, uh, as for the possibility of being able to define a schema for data, val for, uh, data validations and forms? I think that's a great idea. Uh, you should build it and put it in atmosphere. <laughs> we're, we're giving you a great set of core APIs that you can build that on top of. And if you make the best one, it might just be the official thing to do in the Meteor 2.0 book. <laughs> uh, Galaxy equals equals Heroku for Meteor, question mark? <laughs> um, well, the interesting thing about Heroku is uh, it runs on their hardware. And if you want to run on your hardware, or you want to root on those boxes, or you want to dig in and understand exactly how it's working on the inside and change it, you can't really do that. So um, the, uh, yeah, 
there's, there's an analogy there for sure. If, if you like how easy it is to deploy a Rails app in Heroku, you're really going to love how easy it is to deploy a Meteor app inside of Galaxy. But um, I, think, uh, I think Galaxy is going to do some other things that are going to blow your mind if you think it's just Heroku for Meteor. So um, I'm, I'm excited to see what everyone thinks. Uh, one more from Twitter. Will we be able to render UI on the server? Uh, Server-side rendering, we are not going to take on for 1.0. And there's a couple reasons for this. One is that um, I've been talking to some other people that uh, use server-side rendering in production. And um, sometimes it's not as much of a speed win as you might think. The other thing is server-side rendering is a, um, the, the main reason, though, is because server-side rendering is the next thing on that um, Meteor UI roadmap after the object-oriented API. So we are chugging ahead toward that. And Meteor UI has been designed around server-side rendering. Um, but it's, it's step three. I told you about step one, land the Meteor UI engine. And step two, land the component, um, component API. Uh, step three is server-side rendering. But is, is, that, is that accurate characterization? I'm, I'm seeing. It will depend on being able to like, start up scripts on the server and not going to have any content. So there's a whole there. Yeah. Uh, David Greenspan points out that there's also a can of worms around running subscriptions on the server and just some, like, there's some existential questions about, like, code that, you know, is, is, is server or is, is client true when you're running client-side code on the server? Hmm. That's, that's a chin scratcher. So <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's, there's, some, uh, there's some things we're going to have to straighten out to work that out. So it's another one of these things where it's, we are, we are working hard toward it, but we're not going to block 1.0 toward it. So that's not saying it's going to take long. It's just it's going to say we're not going to block you from having 1.0 until that's done. And do we, do we have time for one more? I, I, I didn't hear you quite. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the point is, you know, if we're, I'm looking at my web browser, I'm like, wait a second, you know, it's, <laughs> my laptop has an SSD inside of it. I've got this broadband internet connection. I have this, like, astonishing alien technology CPU. Like, this, this isn't a server, you know. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I think kind of the, you know, the interesting point there is, like, well, you know, I think uh, it's an interesting question, like, whether, why we expect server-side rendering to be faster. Like, in a lot of cases, it's actually going to be slower because you have to render it once before you can send anything to the client. And there are definitely cases where it's faster. There's definitely cases where it's the easier way to feed your data to a search engine if you have an application that basically looks like a set of pages. Um, and you know, I, I think our industry is still going back and forth. Like some people go all in on Angular, for example. That's that's not a server-side rendering story. You know, some people um, some people server-side rendering is really important. It's really important to Twitter, for example. Um, I think it really depends on your mix of clients. You know, is it mobile versus desktop? It depends on how much data you're sending. You know, if you're not sending much data, rendering on the clients probably f might even be faster because you're sending less data over the wire. You know, why not let the client construct all that HTML? Um, it depends on whether you're using app cache, in which case, like, it's going to load instantly anyway if you subtract out the JavaScript time. So, um, it's it's uh, it's important. It's um, not it's uh, not as block a blocker for as many things as I once thought. So. But we're, we're definitely on a path to support that. I don't think the world's going to change so dramatically so quickly that we're not going to support it. And one last one from Twitter that just came in again. Uh, Galaxy pricing? Galaxy pricing. Uh, I look forward to talking about Galaxy in more detail at a future date. But I only made one slide deck today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you.